The Chitwood Army invades America on its annual pilgrimage. Each year, this army of 14 entertainers and 20 cars and trucks performs for nearly a million people. Basically, uh, thrill trip business is a way to make a living. Uh, we were born into it, and uh, we have a lot of respect for what we do, and it's really like a job. It's uh, a lot of fun parts to it, of course. There's a lot of uh, parts that aren't so much fun, like the traveling from place to place every night, and those type of things. It's really a lot of hard work. We cover about 32 states, 30,000 miles. A lot of, a lot of road. thing we have to do when we arrive at a location is unload all the Chevrolet equipment and check it over. Check everything for safety and start preparing for the show.
after the equipment is unloaded, since every track's a little bit different, we check out the track and see if there's anything we have to watch out for in particular. Every year we get new Chevrolets because that's what the people like to see, new cars in action. Of course, we still bring some of the old standbys and the clown has his own car too. myself a stunt man and I think we have things pretty well calculated out every stunt has its own things you have to watch out for come time for the stunt you gotta think about you know, hitting a car at 50 miles an hour with an impact of about 60 and it's a little scary Well, anything can happen. I've seen a lot happen. It's usually the freaky stuff that gets you. It's pretty intense whenever I'm probably about five feet from the rim. It gives you like a slingshot effect. You gotta really be hanging on because it just pulls the bike away from you. I wouldn't say it's easy, but it takes a lot of concentration. No stunt is really easy. The main thing to look out for is, is rocks and uh, debris in the track. You know, you want to start in the smoothest part of the track. You only have about, say, two inches on each side of clearance from the 4x4 four four beam. You really can't practice it. You just have to go out and just do it. The jet truck's really not a stunt, it's more of a demonstration. Well, the main thing is not to get too close to the crowd. I think the two-wheel driving is the most difficult. It's probably the safest because of the low speed. The cannon jump would be the most dangerous because uh, if, if you fall short, you have problem of lumber coming in the windshield. If you jump long, you could easily break your back. Well, I've broken my back uh, twice and uh, fractured my neck once. We are professional. No matter how easy or hard these stunts look, you know, the professionals are the only ones that can pull it off night after night. down a racetrack mere inches separating spectacular success from potential disaster in this arena there is no margin for error i think people just have a love for the automobile and particularly that we're driving stock cars i think they can relate to how hard that might be doing that particular thing
it was Joey Chitwood who thought it was a good idea. Get in a car and show them what you can do. Precision driving has always been a part of the show. Back in the old days, the car sure didn't handle good. No power brakes and no power steering. It was a lot like a wrestling match. But everybody worked hard, practiced together, and tried to do a good show for the fans. As the years rolled by, precision driving has gotten better and better. Several things still remain the same. Split second timing, a good car to drive, and pay attention. It's the kind of driving that has made Joey Chitwood's Chevy Thunder Show the best in the world. After years of traveling around, I couldn't wait until I was old enough to drive with my dad in precision driving. As a rookie, I started in the first position, and after years of experience, I moved to the fourth spot. Through 50 years of changing shape and size and style, there is one uncompromising Chitwood constant. They are totally stock cars. We do wear our seat belts. We don't wear helmets for that, uh, mainly because we need to, our, our field of vision has to be perfect. So just a seat belt and uh, hopefully we don't crash. It is precision driving. During the two car and four car precision driving, which I was involved in both, uh, obviously experience counts, track conditions, track size, the width of the track, the way the ramps are set are different every day, so experience is the key. I was saying the business, what's behind you is not any concern of yours, and I don't have to worry about one car. The two guys behind me, Jimmy Canton and uh, Tim Chitwood, they're the ones that have to worry about me. other drivers you're driving with, whether it be another guy in the two car or the other three men in the, in the four car formation. They all have to know each other's moves like clockwork and uh, timing and practice is, is of the essence. That's, all it's, that's what it's all about. Precision driving can be the most extreme adventure if you look at it from just a particular point of view. A driver precise enough to score near misses might use that same accuracy to design and execute a most excellent side-by-side -side brotherly spectacle. The new stunt we're going to be setting up is the double Hollywood head-on. This, this is going to be the first catch car, and we're going to position it here. And then this car actually backs up the catch car to hold it in position when we hit it. We're going to attempt to run these two cars up a ramp and dig into this car, which is going to be a smaller catch car than the one that's holding it in position. That we use a smaller car to get uh, a better bite on it so that when these cars hit, they're going to dig into this one and actually run through it and then turn sideways and then flip over. It was really exciting to do the double sidewinder with my brother Tim. We had uh, planned everything out pretty perfectly and we were sure glad when everything went perfectly. The main
main thing you have to do first is get lined up on the car you're going to hit and then hold on to the steering wheel so you don't get thrown around in the car too much. Sometimes you have to duck out of the way of the roof as it comes in when you're rolling over and of course you always get a little dirty and sore the next day. In May 1942, George Rice Chitwood married Marie Elizabeth Harris, and her life would change forever. Well, it wasn't easy because now they have a home away from home and their beautiful trailers. But in those days, I raised my two on the back seat of a Chevrolet. <laughs> well, Joey started, um, somebody bought him a miniature motorcycle. And his first trip around the track was on a little motorcycle at five years old. Now, Tim was a little later. He didn't get started until he was about 12. And he rode with his dad. And then when he was 14, he started driving on the track. One year, I did go in the show, because I was an acrobatic dancer to begin with. And um, they had a contraption on top of the cars that I could hang on to when they went over the ramps. So I did that for one year. was born April 12, 1912, the night the Titanic sank, and did his first thrill show on the 4th of July, 1944. In 1946, I was driving a car, the, the front stretch was still bricked at Indianapolis, and I couldn't keep my foot on the throttle right, so I went out and got the, the uh, belt out of my dirt track car, put it in the, my, my Indianapolis car, and of course, uh, Wilbur Shaw and Rex Mays, who in charge of the race drivers, tried to get me to take it out. And I Why? Said, well, they, they, they said, well, if they'd had a belt in their car, they wouldn't be there today because they both got thrown out and they were still living, so they figured you had to get thrown <laughs> out of a car. So I talked them into let me uh, drive with it, and they said, well, if, we'll let you drive. If, if you see you're going to hit the wall, if you'll release that belt. And I said, well, I'll do that. <laughs> George Chitwood officially became Joey Chitwood after a sports writer thought the St. Joe on a race car was the driver's name. And thanks to a misprint in the morning paper, Joey Chitwood became a legend. Well, I remember him being very tough, but also very fair and, and honest. Uh, if he told you he was going to do something, you could really count on it. And, uh, of course, he really taught me a lot. And uh, over the years, uh, I got yelled at a few times down in the turns when I did something wrong. But all in all, uh, it was a great experience. the hardest part about that is being able to back up with that much speed. If you can back up with that much speed, the rest of it will fall into place as long as you don't do anything real stupid. The reverse spin has always been a part of the throw show. Uh, of course, with the old cards they used to use, uh, yeah, I'm sure it was real tough. And my dad actually got it uh, perfected to where he used to do it with one hand with a, a hanky flying out the window. So uh, he did perfect it after years and years, but the first few years it was awful tough. You see some of the uh, the cars uh, getting upside down when they weren't supposed to. And one of the main things you have to worry about is on a bad track, the car has a tendency to want to try to lift. So uh, you might have to get it back in the, uh, the accelerator a little earlier on a bad track. And, and things you just learn uh, through years of practice. And of course, we take all the safety precautions we can. Corvette now, which will actually go about 75 in reverse. Most tracks I'm able to hit 65, depending on the size of it and 
backing up that fast. See, the car steers 10 times as fast because the steering's actually on the rear of the car because the car's going backwards. So any movement of the steering wheel is greatly exaggerated and just got to be real careful. And basically, if you get into a real wet, bad wobble, you can't pull it out. You're either going to hit something or you, if you can spin it quick, that's the only way to save it. <laughs> you get some experience under your belt and you actually just make a quick turn with the steering wheel to snap the car around and you almost let the car want to do what it wants to do after that as soon as it comes almost all the way around you shift gears get back in the throttle if you can't touch the brakes at any time the emergency or the foot foot brake a lot of people think you got to hit the brakes to make it come around if it does if, if you do touch the brakes it'll do just the opposite whatever point the car is at on the spin it'll stay there and the whole car will just wash out so you definitely can't touch the brakes at any time. this one uh, I'm, I'm in a convertible obviously in the Corvette and, and, and don't wear a helmet but uh, I just have a lot of confidence in myself in the car so the safety is just don't crash man so it's, it's what I really like to do I, I really like to scare myself riding experience, uh, nine years as a professional. Um, I have 1,200 live performances under my belt. You know, um, whenever I was younger, I was kind of a wilder kid growing up and, you know, getting as much riding in as I could. And I got lucky and I got in with the Joey Chitwood Show. motorcycle precision driving. Um, jumping over the car is really, there is a moving object next to you, but you know, I'm focused on the ramp the whole time. So I really, you know, you're in the air 
When the car's right underneath it so fast, it's over with. You know, you just got to look at it that way. You can't, you can't think about, wow, what if I crash? You can't think about it that way. over the ramp, I'm always on the bottom going into that turn, always. There's cross coming back. There's cross you coming back. Middle, you in the middle over the ramp. Yep. Okay, we go high again. First cross coming back, then jump me only. Okay. You ready? I'm back. That's good. It comes with the job. You know, you ride a motorcycle, you know, I don't care if you're the best in the world, you still crash. You know, it, it does happen. Uh, I try to stay as consistent as I can. You know, just try to stay up on, you know, on my equipment and everything. Wear all the, all the safety gear, everything like that. two inches on each side of clearance from the four by four beams that hold the board together. And you gotta get right in, right in the center of them. If you hit one of those, you'd be in trouble. I wear a uh, jumpsuit, uh, Nomex hood, which is a fireproof hood, helmet and a leather jacket and uh, fireproof gloves. And that's about all you need. You just got to get your head down at the last second so you, you hit it with the top of your helmet, not your face. I started doing this um, about three quarters of the way through my first season. And it's basically one of those type of stunts where you, you really can't practice it. You just have to go out and you just do it, you know. And there is no practicing. You got to go through the wall one way or the other and it's just do it. you know, 40 yards away from me, roughly. It depends on, on the track. Um, then I just come at him, you know, wide open pretty much. I got my eye on the ramp, I mean, all the way to the ramp, going through the gears and everything like that. So to, just try to make it as smooth as I can. I hit it right in the middle of the ramp most every time. I gotta mention, uh, uh, about my second movie, uh, with Barbara Stanwyck and Clark Gable, To Please a Lady. Mm. I did the, the, I doubled for Clark Gable in a race car and the stunts. And we, we was out there about three months and they were two great people. And I'd have to say that was a, 
the greatest movie that I ever worked in. Means I worked with those two people. One time, Roger Moore, when I was, when we did live and let die, uh, was uh, in an airplane with me where we tore the wings off of an airplane, and, and he wanted to ride uh, ride along for the stunt. In fact, I was dressed like an old lady, and uh, we uh, actually they let him ride in the plane while we tore the wings off the airplane, uh, taxiing through a hangar, and he really got a big kick out of it, and uh, and. Uh, and things like that, and that's, that's kind of neat uh, to be associated with that type of a, a guy, and, uh, and uh, that's, that's one of the good parts of the business, I guess. There is no doubt that the Chitwoods have left an indelible mark on the motion picture and television industry, setting the standard for automobile action in more than 30 feature presentations, and after 50 years, they show no signs of slowing down. is one of my favorite things uh, because it is a relatively safe stunt. You don't have to worry about getting heart hurt, but uh, obviously you can tear up some equipment and uh, you could get hurt doing it. I've, in fact, I broke my hand doing it one time. But basically, it's just the most difficult thing you can do with a car. I mean, it, you have to react so quick. You have to adapt to every track situation. Uh, dirt tracks, paved tracks, dirt tracks that are deep, some the horses race on, some of the cars race on. And it really takes more experience to learn that particular stunt and do it well than it does anything else. We actually perfected it in 1961 with the boys of cars in the old pro show, and they went as far as they could until the, the cars lost momentum. And uh, but finally, uh, a fellow by the name of Al Gross and that who worked for us in 1961 came up with the idea of locking the rear end in the car where it would have positive pull once it was up there. So we kept going further and further, and uh, uh, my brother Tim holds a record of 5.9 miles, which we're real proud of. I've said it a couple times, and then he broke my record, and then uh, now that I've retired more or less from driving, and he's got the world record for driving an American car, which we're real proud of. Uh, it's probably the most difficult as far as training in the show to do. It takes the most years to learn. I've been doing it for 28 years, and I still learn every night I do it. Uh, we're going to go up the ramp with the right side wheels on the ramp. Driver's side will be down. We cut the wheel very sharply to the right to make the car go up. That's what we're about to do. Now that you're up, you kind of just ride it like a bicycle, jockey the wheel back and forth, maintaining the balance point. Uh, Actually, to go around the turn like we're doing, you actually have to take the car past the center of gravity, which will make it want to turn left, but obviously you can't let it go too far or you'll end up on your roof. We better set it down. We got a tire that's not new on this thing. You ready? Okay, ready for a little bump. All right. record for driving an American-made automobile. American-made automobiles are heavier and therefore are harder on tires. That's why we haven't gone as far as the Europeans. Uh, last I heard, I think they went a little over seven miles. But uh, when I went 5.9 miles, the tires were the only thing that kept me from going any further. The tires actually blow out because the cars are so heavy, they just they uh, wear the sidewall of the tire right out. Well, 
I think it's man and, and you know, that's why we went to the moon. That's why, you, you know, anything there is, you see how far you can go. So with the car, how far can you drive it on two wheels? Can you drive it on two wheels at all? Which obviously we've done. How far can you jump? How many times can you roll over? You know, it's just a, a challenge. There's no doubt about it. I think the most important thing that my dad taught me was uh, to always keep safety the number one thought in, in your mind, whether you're doing a stunt in the show or in the movies or, or whatever. Uh, you have to sort of think it out, know what's going to happen, know your limits, and always keep safety in mind. Pickup truck's really not a stunt, it's more of a demonstration of a stock of pickup truck we have. This jet engine is out of an F7U and developed 6,000 pounds of horsepower. Seventy gallons of fuel in three minutes we're going to fire a lightning show. I was one of the ones that helped build it, and I don't know, I just kind of considered uh, one of my children, sort of. Kind of nicknamed the truck Wee Willie. Well, the main thing is not to get too close to the crowd. It being a new Chevrolet, it handled just the same as uh, the pickup I drive on the street. Can you imagine passing this Chevy-powered vehicle on the highway and wondering, what is this thing used for? I really always wanted to do the, the space rocket jump because uh, the jump man in the show seemed like 
Uh, he was always the star of the show, and uh, he had a lot of respect from everybody else. So when I was 20 and did it for the first time, I was glad to get the chance, and I felt like I was finally the star of the show. This particular rocket was built in 1966, literally by hand, by my dad. And he did all the welding on it, he did all the design of it. It's 20 feet long. It's eight feet at the widest. The tracks inside are on nearer the floor and they only give about an inch and a half of clearance for the car to fit through. Before the rocket car became the Chitwood finale, Joey tried a host of experimental jumps with every kind of car. brother about five times and watched what he did watched how he got his speed and how he accelerated how the speedometer reacted it's really something you got to develop your own feel for and there's really no way of practicing you just got to do it and you just hope the first few go all right where you can continue first jump was about the best jump I've ever done. Uh, I was concentrating so much on my speed and, and obviously in my alignment that I, the car floated through the air and I didn't even feel it land. So I don't know if the jump was that good or if I was thinking about something else or was so scared, I don't know which, but I never even felt the car land. That's the only time that's ever happened. Usually it's a pretty good shot when you land. focus on the left-hand runner when I'm coming down there. If you get your, uh, if, the, if the wheel lines up right on the red line on the left side, obviously it'll fall into place on the right. So you only, I only look at one side. like a baseball pitcher he can't really aim his pitches he has to just rear back and kind of fire if you start thinking about it and aiming then that's when you start hitting the side now you can hit the sides and still do a real good jump it just depends how hard you hit them if you scrub enough speed off then obviously you could be short and, and, and hit the end of the ramp which would not be good I've done about 1,800 jumps and I've missed five of them. Missed five. White totaled the car, hit the end of the ramp, did two endos one time. Uh, totally short. It didn't flip, it just crashed right into the ramp and tore the whole front end off. Uh, went off to the side a couple times and uh, destroyed the ramp in the car. We're going 47 miles an hour, and it's a 65-foot jump. Within a half a mile an hour, one way or the other, to a good landing. I mean, the car might withstand a mile an hour over, but it does hurt it, and of course it could hurt me or my back, so it has to be right on.
Want the best seat in the house for motorsports entertainment? Then Diamond P Sports is your ticket for excitement. From over 40 spectacular titles in the growing Diamond P inventory, you can build a home video library of your favorite motorsports action that you'll enjoy for years to come. For the drag racing enthusiast, Diamond P annually presents the entire NHRA championship season in review. You get all the dramatic action as the best drivers chase the elusive NHRA championship crowns. Beginning with Drag Racing 86, you can pick and choose from the entire library of season-long highlights. For an exciting and comprehensive look at recent drag racing history, there's Decade of Thrills and Decade of Thrills 2, examining the most chilling, agonizing, and emotion-filled moments of the 70s and 80s. Now, funny car fans can't get enough of Fabulous Floppers 1 and 2. The sound and excitement of Pro Stocks takes the stage in Hot Rods from Detroit, and Top Fuel is what's hot in Kings of the Sport. Interested in the legends of drag racing? Diamond P fills the bill with a dynamic story of Don Prudhomme and two videos on the one and only Big Daddy, Garlet's The Legend and Garlet's 2, The Legend Lives On. Now, if you're a drag racing history buff, you can trace the evolution of NHRA in Gathering Speed. For those who like their racing loud and raw, don't miss Top Fuel Sensations, the sights and sounds and smell of record-breaking performance and Challenge of Fire, the 